In part one, we looked at how you can create a flow code embedded program and a flow code PC developer program to create a PC interface for an Arduino for data gathering and control. In this video, we're going to look at how you can expand on this to develop a more sophisticated system for test and control. So here, I've got some hardware. We've got an Arduino, um, we've got a number of LEDs, potentiometers mimicking sensors, switches mimicking inputs, and a small motor. On the PC application, we've got a number of dials which represent the potentiometers or the, or the sensor quantities being measured. We've got some LEDs which are monitoring the input switches and we've got some switches which are sending outputs to the Arduino and we've also got a small PWM control which is allowing us to control the speed of the motor. And if I just vary each of the quantities on the PC application, you can see that I've got full control of the hardware. If I click on the switches, you can see that the PC is picking up the status of those switches. And if I alter some of the dials, or the potentiometers rather, then you can see that the status of the potentiometer is being monitored by the dials. So that's our project. And of course, this is just a demonstration. What you can do is you can take the software and hardware and you can alter it for your test and control needs. So this is our hardware. You can see I've got an Arduino. I've got five LEDs which have resistors going down to ground and those are connected to pins 9 to 13 on the Arduino. We've got five potentiometers which are mimicking sensors and these are connected to A0 to A4 on the Arduino. We've got some switches with, with little monitor LEDs and these are connected to pins um, 4 to 8 on the Arduino and we've got a little solar motor which doesn't require any transistor amplification so it works directly off the Arduino pin 3. Now of course if you have your own motors what you'll need to do is put in some FETs or some kind of motor driver chip between the motor and the Arduino to get yourself a little bit more power. Now this is just a demonstration you can modify the hardware you can change the potentiometers for sensors in your system, be it voltage, current, pressure or temperature. Similarly, you can use the switch inputs for your control panel or logic levels in your test bed. And you can use the LED outputs to control relays or solenoid valves. The resources section at the end of this video shows you where you can get the programs from. In part one, we showed you how to construct an embedded program from scratch. Now the problem here is that there are very many variations of functionality that different users want from their hardware interface. Some just want simple inputs and outputs, but others might want to use a slave Arduino to send an I squared C command, an SBI command. They might want to use more motors with PWM, use servo motors, or lots of other functions. And potentially for all the different uses, there's a lot of programming work here for you. So what we've done is we've made a general purpose program and we've wrapped all of that functionality up into this program. And you can see it here in front of you. So we've got a UART like we had before. Uh, we've got a one wire interface, so you can use that. There's a couple of code blocks there that we're using. We've got some servo um, controllers, lots of motor controllers. Um, so there's quite a flexible panel. Now the main program uh, does some initialization of interrupts and values, and then it sets up a small state machine where it's waiting for an incoming command on the USB. And when there is a command, it comes to this uh, macro action command, and you can see that there are lots of case statements where in this case, if a command for a switch is received, 
it goes and it sets all the switches. Um, if it's an analog command, it sets all of the analog parts of the circuit up, uh, SPI commands, I squared C commands, and so on. So we're not going to go over all of that, but you can see it's quite a complex program. Um, now all of this can be wrapped up in a single component. And if you look at your component libraries under API, you can see that all of this code is actually contained into this component. So if you don't want to customize this, you can just put that onto your panel, um, do some initialization, and then compile that as your embedded program. So we haven't gone over that in detail. Um, it's all quite well commented, and you should be able to take that and then customize it for your own uses. But hopefully that's given you a flavor of the contents of the embedded program that we've sent into the Arduino. So this is our PC developer program. You can see I've got a panel here. On the panel, there are a number of elements, some dials, text fields, indicators, switches, and a variable control item. And by clicking on them, you can see their properties on the properties panel. There is also a hidden component, um, which is doing the communication to the embedded device. And that we've called that a SCADA Arduino component, and I can make it visible. Uh, if I set its properties uh, to make it larger, uh, you can see it appears there. And there's the hidden component. And we've hidden it just to keep our main panel neat. So that's the panel. This is the entire program. We're doing some initialization, uh, setting a count to zero in infinite loop. And our Panel components are in collections of five. So we're basically repeating this second loop five times. And we're not going to go over it in detail, um, but we're basically going through each of the different types of element and we're running a sub program on a case statement. Uh, in this case, we're reading an analog pin on the embedded system and setting the value of the appropriate gauge um, to be the same as the Arduino input. Uh, we're then reading the switch status and and so on and setting the digital pins so it's well commented and you should be able to make sense of what's going on in that program now you can basically just go debug and play and then the program will run or what you can do is you can um, set this up as a executable file you basically save it as an executable and then you can distribute that freely to anybody who might want to use the program you create with the hardware you create. Now this video has shown you how you can use Flowcode hardware with an Arduino Uno for test and measurement. But similarly, Flowcode is able to set up um, APIs for other microcontroller systems, including the Arduino Mega, PIC, ESP32 and Raspberry Pi. And at Matrix, we use this combination of embedded and PC developer programs for all of our engineering education products. So you can create very sophisticated applications if you want to. All of the resources for this project are available on the Flowcode website. If you go app developer sample projects, then you can see that there is a general purpose IO board with a PC developer slave. Um, and you can download the documentation both for Arduino and ESP, as well as all the programs, which allow you to easily get started with developing fantastic human-machine interface programs for low-cost hardware like the Arduino and the ESP.